Welcome to Cameron House Marina, I'm Ruben from Marine Sales Scotland. This is a 1997 C-Line F410 Statesman powered by twin Volvo Penta TAM D63 370 horsepower diesel engines on shafts. It was actually revolutionary at the time when this came out because it gave the owners a full beam forward cabin with an ensuite, a full beam aft cabin with an ensuite and also separate shower room, all while retaining the sleek, elegant profile of a flybridge cruiser and much sort of different to your traditional 40-ish foot flybridges that would have a, a side cabin. They wouldn't have an aft cabin set up. You'd have forward cabin and side cabin. This retains in principle a side cabin, but instead of being two beds or, or bunk beds, we actually have a secondary dinette or a secondary saloon with a conversion kit. So you can drop it down to turn it into a bedroom if you need to. That gives you the capability to sleep two in the front, two in the secondary dinette, two in the saloon and then two in the aft cabin. So it will take eight people or four couples out overnight on the water. The F410 was so popular that then one year later, it became the sea line F43. And we all know exactly how popular that they have become. It's a huge boat. It's had a lot of money spent on its upkeep to make it present exactly the way that it comes across here on the camera. But more importantly than money, it's had time spent on it. So with that, you can probably see here, just in the morning summer sun, the shine coming off the hull. It has had a full top sides machine polish. It's had its teak reconditioned and brought back to original. That is here on the swim platform and the cockpit, also on the steps up to the flybridge and the flybridge itself. Subsurface has been anti-filled. That only happened a little over a month ago. And then the interior has had a full detail valet. At the transom end, so next to your storage lockers at the back here for things like ropes, fenders, boat hook, we have our gas bottles that live in there. Also then if anyone fancies a light refreshment, they want to go in for a swim, reboarding ladder, transom hot and cold shower to rinse off when you get back on board. Personal opinion varies. I've always felt that in here, when you take your steps up into the cockpit, the cockpit of the F43 and the 410, it feels very exclusive, very, very much VIP. Because of the elevation, we get a good amount of privacy from here. So as people are walking past, they can't look in. But from here, it's a bit like being on a beach club. You have excellent views of all the scenery behind you. Very sociable because you have the U-shape. Up in here lives the Sea Line Factory original table that comes with this. So you can use this as a dinette if you want to dine. With the canvas rolling down as well and the hard top gives you weather protection. But obviously on days like this, we can roll everything back up. All these canopies store up in here and that makes us a really, really nice place to relax if you don't want to completely expose yourself to the sunshine up on the flybridge. Window for ventilation for the aft cabin. Let's take a look upstairs in the Sky Lounge. So everything has its own individual itemised covers. Revealing underneath the recently renewed Flybridge upholstery. It is Flybridge weather today. This is exactly why you buy a boat and especially one of this stature. You have space for two up on the day bed at the back. If you want, you can pull the bimini across and that will give you some UV protection. Into the backrest, they stitch the sea line logo and then we have our big L shape here. Flybridge will take seven to eight people plus two here at the double helm. You also have the extension of the stereo up here so you can listen to music while underway and then some storage underneath the starboard side bench. The helm position, it consists of our twin throttles, bow thruster, trim tabs, speed and depth and revs, also VHF and then the electric anchor winch control of which you also have foot pedestals up there. Everything is repeated downstairs on the inside helm. All the flybridge teak has been reconditioned. You can see that looks really, really super clean here. But yeah, this is where you want to spend most of your time when you're boating, especially while you're underway. You want to be driving from up here. It's a central driving position and it feels really, really good underway because you can see the bow wave and the crest as you are propelling yourself along through the sea or the lock, wherever it may be. Glass sliding patio doors give you complete weather protection from the rain. These are very popular with younger families as well because if you have young kids or pets, once that door is across, it's locked and it's dead bolted at the top. It stops the kids or the pets from wandering around the outer or upper decks unsupervised. We have the optimal configuration if you want to bring your friends on board. A big U-shaped, focused around the table and then it faces and is complemented with this back bench which is built up against the port side of the hull. Now within 
this module, you have storage, you just lift up the top side of it and you have storage underneath. It will then pull across when the table removes. You remove the table, put that in, and that converts this into the largest double bed on board the boat. The high gloss walnut table will fold across like that. It will then rotate and swivel if you need better access in to the saloon seating. It then has a high low feature so you can use it both as a dinner table or also as a coffee table in the mornings. If we stand up against the starboard side quarter here, we've got our speakers built into the actual frame of the saloon, our stereo control layer, and then we've got two 30 volt speakers, sorry, two 30 volt sockets with USB chargers built into them as well. Now the beam is what gives us so much usable space and what makes it so impressive actually when you're inside. These were nicknamed the spaceship when they first came out or like a TARDIS because of the volume and the amount of space in here. No foul smells, the upholstery is in good condition and it prevents super, super clean exactly the same way that it presents on our camera here. If we look in to this module, we have our cockpit refrigerator, small freezer compartment on that as well and then just built up against the bulkhead where the join is, our Everspacker warm air heating control. They were built at a time uh, in Kidderminster, UK, at a time when quality was paramount over profit. So a big talking point for all these sea lines is the quality of the finish, the woodwork, the joinery, the fixtures and the fittings. Going up onto the helm position, this double helm is a carbon copy of exactly what you have upstairs. It will take two people. We have down below AC and DC power. Again, some 12 volt power just up here, your master switchboard. If you want to go analog, you can put your maps within the map case here. You can augment that with the onboard Garmin GPS. And then some people now will want to just plug into the 12 volt socket, charge their iPad, have the Navionics app, and you can set that up here. And then you have both your Navionics and also your Garmin chart plotter to follow your routes. VHF is just above me here. And then this window opens for ventilation when you're going along twin throttles, L rim trim tab, bow thruster, rudder angle, nav data, autopilot, speed and then depth, manual compass and a drinks holder, wipers on either side and you have a control for the electric anchor winch upstairs, also one from here and then also one if you are up at the bow. Excellent, down into the galley. So the galley is only three steps down, but it still feels like you are part of the party. If you have guests on board, you can stand here, cook something up and still speak to your guests. So it's not too disjointed. We have our oven, very clean, that is gas fired. Then our cooking facilities are extended with three gas burners on board as well. Next to that, two sinks, plenty of storage here. And then a galley fridge that was recently renewed. Super, super clean that. If you cook up a Michelin star meal, you don't have far to travel, so the food can be served piping hot. Simply put that down here in the dinette. Now, this is where I said earlier at the beginning of the video, traditionally, in a 40-ish foot uh, flybridge cruiser, this would be a side cabin. It would go slightly underneath the helm position, but it's much, much more usable. You've got a secondary living quarter or secondary living accommodation. So you can drop the table down. Again, it's high-low. You can put in a filler cushion there if you wanted to turn that into a double bed. But this is quite cute. It's under the eaves, and if you have a young family, the kids want their own space, it's a perfect place for them to come and get out of your hair. If we go up along the back, Give it a different aperture looking towards the galley. And then there's storage underneath all of these cushions and also above in the overhang lockers. The forward cabin, so the bed is offset to give you more length and width. We have our heating which comes in here, plenty of storage overhead. And look, headlining is good, no evidence of water ingress, no sagging. No evidence of dampness around either of the windows as well. Full hanging locker storage in here. And then for your husbands to do their makeup, we have a vanity with his and hers lockers as well. Jack and Jill access into the day heads gives this an ensuite electric flush toilet. There's a waste tank fitted to the boat. You can also pump that out to sea. But if we close that, we can then access it not only from the forward cabin, also from the galley, 
hot and cold water on board, some storage there, a shelf for your toilet roll likely, and then a shower. But bear in mind there is a separate shower room, which is much more usable than a wet head on board. That separate shower room is up at the back where the aft cabin lies. In the aft cabin, which is likely going to be the master because of the facilities that it provides, and it is full beam, you have hang and locker storage, some behind the door as well. Look at how they've molded the floor of the cockpit and also the walkway to give you full standing headroom to go all the way around the bed into the shower room should you need to, and also into the ensuite should you need that as well. Up against the starboard side, we have another vanity as well with his and hers lockers. A nice full size double bed. Great access, so you can walk around the entirety of the bed. You can also lie there and watch the television in the morning times. Our ensuite is just off to the port side here. Manual flush sea toilet, waste tank fitted as well to the boat. Good head height. And if we go on to the adjacent side, we have our shower room. Full standing headroom and then a seat in case you've had a particularly long day out in the water. Sockets again down at floor level, but a really clean, really well appointed full beam aft cabin. Finishing touches are both the engines. Twin Volvo Penta Tam D63 high performance 370 horsepower diesel engines. They are on shafts. We had the boat out on sea trial for just over an hour. She's running very well. And what an excellent vantage point you get from up here on the flybridge. Such a clean example, loads of usable spaces, especially down below. And what a beautiful boat to spend your time aboard. I'm Ruben from Marine Seal Scotland. We're fun in the water begins.